Hi, and welcome back uh, to my channel. So in the previous uh, episode, I showed how the Porta Pack can be used uh, as a nice uh, signal generator. So it has uh, an application in the utilities section called uh, a signal generator, and that can produce a FM modulation or a pure sine, uh, sine wave uh, from one megahertz basically to six uh, gigahertz. So this is a, a nice thing. However, um, yeah, we observed that there, are, there is some noise, there are some harmonics uh, in this signal, depending, of course, on the amplitude of, uh, on, on the gain that you decide to set on this uh, signal generator utility. So in this video, I want to keep uh, investigating how realistically can the ACRF uh, be used as a transmitter. So of course, if you, you know, just transmit at uh, zero dBm, uh, which means uh, one milliwatt, uh, well, it's not a big deal. You're not going to disturb really anybody. But if you decide to uh, send the output uh, to the uh, ACRF to an amplifier, for example, to do ham radio uh, on the ham bands, for example, 14 megahertz or 7 megahertz and so, well, the amplifier can amplify also the noise. So you have really to be careful about uh, uh, how clean your signal is. So this is what I'm going to, to, to try to do in, uh, in, uh, in this video. <coughs> To develop a little bit uh, uh, um, sort of uh, safe setting to, to use the ACRF as a transmitter for uh, an external amplifier. So to do that I want to experiment uh, um, transmitting uh, signals at around 7 megahertz or 14 megahertz. So these are the uh, 40 meters or 20 meters bands of ham radio. And to do that, uh, I, I will filter the output of the ACRF with a little circuit. So this is a little um, filter I made. As you can see, it's a low-pass filter at uh, 10 megahertz. So here I depicted uh, the circuit uh, that I implemented. But really, this is just uh, an implementation of uh, this circuit here. So I already showed you one of my previous episodes. You can use this uh, filter RF uh, tools uh, to get uh, the circuit um, diagram for low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, and so on. So in this case, this is a quite a simple thing to realize. It's made of three inductors and four capacitors. Okay, so in the, I chose uh, this one because it's quite nice because all the inductors are the same, and 2.2 micro Henry's is something I had uh, with me and also uh, only two pairs of uh, capacitors here, okay? So this is um, the result. And uh, so let's see how it worked first, and then we connect it uh, to the ACRF and see, uh, well, how the combination works. So I'm going to connect uh, it to my spectrum analyzer and uh, uh, use the tracking, generation, uh, gener uh, tracking generator functionality of my spectrum analyzer, as I already showed in a previous episode, to, to, to see the behavior of this, uh, of this filter. So um, I'm now going to activate uh, the tracking generator. As you can see, the, um, the, um, the spectrum analyzer is now configured with a center frequency of 900 megahertz and a span of 1.8 gigahertz. So we are going to see how this low pass filter for very low frequencies, uh, 10 megahertz, uh, works across uh, all the spectrum. And then we will zoom uh, in the part of interest to see how it works. Uh, anyway, uh, before I start, um, so the tracking generator is going to output a signal which is basically constant at uh, minus uh, uh, 10 dBm, so about here. Uh, so if you go to the tracking generator here, I'm going to start it right now by clicking here, okay? So we'll see how it goes. Uh, so this is the behavior of the filter across the whole spectrum. Uh, so let's take the marker. So as you can see, it has a uh, great attenuation at the beginning. So at uh, 20, uh, 30, about 30 megahertz, we are attenuating. Uh, so the, the tracking generator is sending out minus 10 dBm, and here it's uh, minus... Uh, uh, 50, in fact, even less, so it's a uh, 40 dB attenuation, but then it's uh, not so good at attenuating frequencies as you can see around uh, 455 megahertz, but it's doing something. And for example, here it's attenuating at uh, 800, it is attenuating about 30, 30 dB. 
So this is the behavior of my very, mm, you know, amateur level filter that I made up here. And um, yeah, just uh, just to check if I turn off the the tracking generator, you see I have no noise in the. So there is no noise introduced uh, this time, unlike one of my previous episodes. There is no noise introduced by the cables or by. Uh, this filter because this filter is shielded, you know, I put it in a metal box for this purpose to avoid picking up uh, external noise Okay, so anyway, let's see uh, how the filter behaves in uh, the frequency that we care about so at the beginning of the spectrum So I'm going to put the center frequency at uh, uh, Here and the span at 50 megahertz. So now we are spanning from 0 to 50 megahertz, okay? Um, again, I'm going to now activate the tracking generator and the tracking generator will output a minus 10 dB signal from 0 to 50 uh, megahertz. Uh, so let me do that. And I'm going to start it. So uh, as expected, so this is a 10 megahertz low pass filter. It works pretty nice because you see it uh, up to here we are at 8.12 uh, megahertz um, yeah okay so you see the spectrum analyzer is complaining a little bit it's uh, the, the, the message uh, tracking level is showing off because the tracking generator really cannot produce frequencies from 0 to 100 kilohertz here instead I'm asking it to start from zero and in that phase it has some problems so sometimes it's glitching I could fix that by starting this, the sweep at uh, 100 kilohertz but I don't I don't care about that uh, so just uh, to be quick here anyway here we are at uh, 8.12 megahertz so the signal is still at minus 10 dBm which is good uh, the signal is starting now to go down we are at 10 uh, megahertz and the signal is still around 10 dBm so not at 180 which is good and then the attenuation starts okay so once we reach uh, uh, the 20 megahertz about here which is the first harmonic of uh, uh, 10 megahertz the signal is about uh, 30 db down okay so it's a very good attenuation and when we reach the 30 megahertz uh, we are a lot down so we are 47 uh, db down okay and then as we see it starts climbing up and we saw the world response uh, up to 1.8 gigahertz but um, yeah so this is a, a very simple filter but as you can see it works fine uh, in uh, at the beginning of the spectrum so now i'm going to uh, turn off the tracking generator and uh, and instead uh, use the acrf as a signal generator so i'm removing the cable from the tracking generator okay and I'm connecting to the HRF uh, Porta Pack uh, with uh, the Havoc firmware. Connecting it properly, don't let me be completely sure. Okay. And so, okay, I'm going to the signal generator utility. I'm setting up a couple of things. So I want to produce uh, a pure sine wave, not so not a frequency modulation. I'm going to try to produce a signal at uh, 14 megahertz. And uh, let's put uh, the gain, which can be set from 0 to 47 at uh, 26. Okay, because in my previous video, uh, using the Porta Pack as a signal generator, uh, I thought that that was a kind of a nice, uh, nice uh, strength level, okay, to avoid harmonics and unnecessary noise. So let me uh, start it. By the way, I have connected it. Uh, uh, to the spectrum analyzer with a DC blocker for the reason I explained in sometimes in my other video in, in my other videos because I discovered that the porta pack push out some uh, 1.5 volts DC so in general it's good to avoid putting DC on a spectrum analyzer and uh, I'm not putting any attenuator this time because I know I've checked that uh, this produce uh, are, you know uh, an amount of energy that the spectrum analyzer can comfortably handle so okay anyway I will start it uh, now and see what happens at, uh, so this is uh, uh, the response that we get uh, at the beginning of the spectrum so as you can see we have our main signal here at uh, uh, 40 megahertz perfect and uh, we have the harmonics so this harmonics is at uh, minus uh, 66 uh, dB and the main uh, carrier, the main signal is at uh, minus 4 dB. So we have uh, 
how much? Minus 60 dB, which is great. So this is, uh, mm, I would say, a great, uh, a great output, and we can be happy about that. If I reduce the gain slightly, uh, now I'm setting it up to 20, you see the, the, the harmonics are almost uh, uh, cancelled out. And uh, if I continue, now I'm at 16 gain, the harmonics are completely gone. Uh, this, however, um, uh, does not, uh, so, re uh, remove uh, the noise that we have here, which is around uh, six, minus 60 dB. Um, now, if I turn off uh, the, the generator, just to, to check it, so I'm going to stop it. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't know. So these are not harmonics, of course. I suspect that this is uh, some... Uh, so let me see if there is a relationship between the gain of the signal and the level of noise here at around 3 MHz. So if I put the signal down to zero, so you see, this is the minimum gain. So uh, the gain is zero now. So this, this is the minimal output uh, that uh, you can get. By the way, at zero gain, we get uh, um, minus... 31 dBm. Let's move to 10 gain, minus 21, 0 gain, minus 31. So it looks like indeed it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, for every uh, unit of gain we have exactly one uh, dBm, which is amazing. So this thing is uh, sort of calibrated. Yes, yes. Now we have gain 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, well, 20, okay. Anyway, at tw 20 gain, we have a minus 10 dB. Well, let's move to 30 just to check uh, if we get to zero. We have, mo well, more or less, yes. So the, the, the gain is kind of linear. It starts from minus 30 dBm. Uh, and this point, let me go up to... So here we started to have a lot of distortion, but the game is now 40. We get uh, 9 dBm, so we stop here. But uh, so it's pretty interesting that the gain here on the porta pack acts almost linearly, and it means really 1 dB. Uh, okay, go, go good. So now I'm again at uh, 0 dBm. Let's go back to uh, 20. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, you see, the, the gain does not affect the noise that we get around uh, here. So I think it, uh, um, this is an avoidable noise that we have to expect. It's probably internal noise of the RF. And so I basically don't care about noise produced at this level. So on the right, uh, I mean, frequencies higher than 10 megahertz, as long as it is below the noise which is unavoidable here at minus 60 dBm. So let me increase the gain a little bit. The harmonics are starting to mount up and I think we are more or less where I want. So where the gain at the first harmonics, so uh, harmonic, which is probably 28 megahertz. So let me see. Exactly, so double the frequency of the main carrier is just at the level of uh, 61 dBm, which is anyway the, 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 the noise that we have here. Okay, so this is uh, gain 39 on the porta pack. So this I would say looks great because, the, let's see, uh, let me go pick search. So our signal is currently at uh, minus 2 dBm. And if I take a delta marker and I move to my first harmonics, yeah, uh, we have uh, basically a difference of 60 dB, which is, uh, which is great. So the signal is really very clean. Okay, uh, so let me uh, go back to one of my marker. Okay, so this is the response at the beginning of the spectrum. So I will be, uh, I think this is a, a perfectly fine signal to send to an amplifier. Uh, so this would uh, not disturb uh, anybody else. So, for example, if you put, uh, give the signal to an amplifier that increase the, the signal by a 30... Of course, the amplifier has to be a good amplifier, a linear amplifier, and without in too much noise. But if you uh, send uh, this signal to uh, such an amplifier that, for example, increase uh, the signal by 30 dB, here we will get about 1 watt output power at uh, our 14 megahertz. And here we will still get minus 30 
dBm, which is essentially nothing. So you're not even transmitting this uh, amount of energy. So that uh, would be completely fine. Uh, okay, so this is just the beginning of the spectrum. Let's see uh, how uh, what is the response in the whole uh, spectrum. Um, up to 1.8 gigahertz. So I'm setting 900 megahertz as central frequency and in the span of 1.8 gigahertz, which is the limit of this. Uh, uh, so you see the effect of my low pass filter makes sure that uh, really there is no noise at the higher, fr higher frequencies. So this is a great response. All the, uh, all the content of the signal is uh, here. You see it start mounting yeah, 27, 40 megahertz. So yeah, so this is a perfectly fine setup if we want to uh, transmit uh, using the HRF on the ham radio bands, or at least at 14 megahertz, uh, you need some kind of um, low pass filter. Uh, so let's uh, go back a second just to uh, see what happens. Um, so frequency, I'm going to put again, uh, um, let's say uh, 15 megahertz and a span of let's say 29 megahertz okay um, so this is the situation uh, we had uh, before um, i'm going to change the frequency now instead of uh, um, 14 uh, let me try 7 which would be the 40 meters uh, band ham radio band so 7 megahertz oh i just put 77 my mistake so let me uh, modify that seven done okay so you see that at seven uh the behavior is not so good why so the main signal has a strength of about my one minus uh, dbn i think before it was uh, minus two or something well it and the harmonics were very very low here the response is different be because uh, um, the first harmonic is barely attenuated by my low pass filter okay so if you transmit at 7 megahertz of course you need something else not a 10 megahertz low pass filter but you would need a 7 megahertz low pass filter 8 megahertz or something something that we lack strongly on these first harmonics so i mean for a setup for sending uh, uh, yeah basically i think i will uh, try to implement another filter a band pass filter around the 14 megahertz uh, so let me put the, again 14 megahertz so uh, i can show you so i want to make at the moment the signal uh, is attenuating frequencies after the 10 megahertz so i would like to make a band pass filter that attenuates either frequencies starting from uh, uh, here we are uh, starting for, uh, from 14. Uh, this is starting from 10, actually. So it's slightly attenuating my carrier, but not so much. No, OK, I think uh, the low pass filter is good at 10 megahertz. But I would li like to do also high pass filter, trying to reduce a little bit the noise at the beginning of the spectrum. Anyway, I will try to do this experiment and uh, create a band pass filter, still using the the website I've shown you before and see what happens and I will report the results uh, when it's done. So thank you very much for, um, for listening and if you have something uh, interesting to say and maybe useful for others, feel free to, to comment in the, in the section below and, uh, and like the video if you liked it. Bye!